What is up Kratix? So the day has finally come, the GTA 6 trailer has been released. Now it was supposed to be released on December 5th at 9am Eastern Time. However, at around 6pm on December 4th, the day before, it was leaked on Twitter and Rockstar responded by suspending the account that leaked it and just tweeted this. Our trailer has leaked, so please watch the real thing on YouTube. Absolutely savage, they just said screw it and just set the trailer live. Now in regards to this trailer breakdown video, I do apologize that it took so long. I just really wanted to analyze this trailer properly, take my time, and just look at every detail I could. But anyways, let's get right into it. We have the first scene of a trailer where you can kind of see Vice City in the background. But if you look to your right, you can also see the prison. Now moving on to the cars on the road here, we have a blue SUV, which looks to be the baller from GTA 5 or a newer variant of it, which of course is based on a Range Rover. The next car seems to be the original Dominator from GTA 5, based on the shape and the stripe down the center. The white van in the middle looks to be the Speedo from GTA 5, I think you see the pattern here. Back to the bottom left here, we see a Bobcat XL pulling a boat, which was a thing that was in GTA 5 as well. We also see what looks to be the Stratum. And then at the far right, we have the back of a Speedo van and the back of the OG Dominator. Now all of the other vehicles here are too difficult to tell what they are. But anyways, on to the next scene, we see a prison fence. And our first look at one of our main protagonists, Lucia, who's in prison. We then see her being questioned by a prison counselor. Then it cuts to the next shot where we see a yacht, which is a brand new boat model, some dolphins and sharks, and a look at the water effects, which look absolutely amazing. Some boats, some jet skis, seagulls flying in the background, you definitely know it's Miami. And our first look at Vice City close up, which looks absolutely incredible. This city looks absolutely massive. And of course, this looks to be a reference to South Beach with all the umbrellas and everything. And if you look at the shore edge, you can even see the seaweed that washes up just like real life. The level of detail here is just incredible. And in regards to the vehicles we have, you can see the Maverick helicopter on the left and the Dodo seaplane on the right, pulling a banner that says Y69 when you can 919. Ah, Rockstar, their sense of humor is always great. <laughs> then we get a look at some of the buildings a bit closer and you can see that they have towels, round pool floats and stuff like that. Nice attention to detail on the props. Then we get our first look at the swamp area of the map, which of course is a direct reference to the Florida Everglades with the airboat. Very cool. Continuing, we see another shot of the Everglades with the swamp area where you see tons of animals including alligators, flamingos, etc. Then our next shot, back on the beach, we have tons of NPCs everywhere. This is a really good shot. They're having a good time at the beach and tons of little props like coolers, foldable chairs, pool floats, etc. And then you can see various NPCs glued to their phones, which is the reality of modern era we live in. And Rockstar has referenced that here. And in the center, we see a guy jogging with his pet chihuahua. So I wonder if NPCs will be walking around with pets and stuff in free mode. I think that's awesome. Now, moving on to vehicles, we have the Super Valido helicopter in the shot at the top and the Sea Sparrow on the right. And then here in the middle, we have a lifeguard truck, which looks to be based on the second gen Ford Explorer Sport Track and is pulling a boat trailer, which is awesome. And then, of course, we have some jet skis here. The black and red one here looks to be an updated Sea Shark from GTA 5. However, the yellow one looks to be a brand new model based on the Yamaha Wave Runner with even the optional speakers model on there as well. Great attention to detail. Then we get a shot of the port area, which is a reference to the port of Miami with the cargo ship and of course the speedboats zooming by. And the one on the right is actually a catamaran, which looks sick. And they all have liveries on them, which could possibly mean boat customization or just different variants. Continuing, we have a shot of some supercars on the highway. And we get a look at some of these street signs as well that give us some information about the location names like Kelly County. 
VCI Airport, of course, Vice City International Airport, a reference to Miami International Airport, Stockyard, and Downtown as well. Also, this building on the left here looks to be based on the Kaseya Center, home of the Miami Heat basketball team, so very cool. And in regards to the cars, the red one is the Zeruso, which has a gas cap model on it, which was not present in GTA V. Plus, it has a brand new interior with ambient lighting in it, which looks incredible. And then the silver car is the Grotti Furio, which looks to be mainly the same on the exterior. And in the distance, we can see the back of the Carbonizer from GTA V, which I'm surprised to see returning in this game. Next up, we have a look at the lowrider scene and what looks to be a reference to Wynwood in Miami. Very cool. On the left side, we have the Primo, and behind that, we have the Chino as well. And in the center, we have the Granger 3600LX. And if we move to the far right here, we have a brand new car model, which is a new Shyster PMP based on the second gen Chrysler 300, which is amazing. The community has been wanting this one for a while, so, so I'm glad that it's finally making a comeback in the GTA series. And it looks to be bagged with some wild customization. Behind that one, we have the Buccaneer Custom. Then getting a little closer here, we have the Tulip M100, but this time it's a Donk variant, and it also has stickers on the windows, which could be new customization. And to the left of the distance, we have what looks to be the Omnis EGT on the far left, even though it's kind of difficult to see what it is, and possibly a new Audi model to the right of that. Now, I did compare it to the Tailgater S on the iWagon, and it does look a bit different, so... Anyways, moving forward a bit here, we have an updated Vapid Stainier, which now has a dock variant as well. And lastly, we have the Jubilee making a return with finally an updated interior. Finally, Rockstar. <laughs> Moving on, we get a look at one of the clubs, which has tons of detail here. Then we see a look at one of the affluent islands here, which is a reference to the Venetian islands in Miami. And you can clearly see that it's directly based on that with the same entrance and everything as real life. So we also have tons of yachts and boats on the left. A massive one on the right and then looking at some of the cars down here this van seems to be the Yuga Classic the truck next to it seems to be the Bobcat XL behind that we have the Bison and in the middle here we have the Banshee moving along we have an insane scene on the road close to the beach which is a direct reference to Ocean Drive just super iconic the first car on the left here is the Comet S2 Cabrio. The one in front of it is the Cheetah Classic, which has an updated Grotti logo. The one in front of that one is the Carbon is there. Then we have the Coquette D10. And in front of that, we have the Landstalker XL. And in front of that, the Granger 3600LX. Moving on to the orange car in the middle, that's the Hellfire. In front of that, we have the Shafter V12. And next to that, we have the Jugular. And if we go forward a little here, we have a brand new Pegasi vehicle based on the Lamborghini Aventador SV. Absolutely beautiful. Then the yellow car seems to be a brand new one. And it is a reference to the yellow Oceanic from Vice City, so very cool there. Then we see the Dominator GTX. And then next to it, the original Tailgater, which is pretty interesting to see this in the game. Then we get a look at another club. And in the next scene, we get a look at a reference to the Florida Keys with even the broken Seven Mile Bridge in there as well, which is awesome attention to detail. And in regards to vehicles, we have the Dodo Seaplane making an appearance again. Some more yachts on the right. And the big one here, it seems that cargo ships actually move around in this game and they're not just static like they were in GTA V, so that's pretty wild. It's going to be interesting to see if you can actually steal these and drive them around or maybe it's similar to the train in GTA V where they have a set route and maybe they can't be veered off course, but I guess we'll see. In the next scene, we get another look at the city in the background and some great details on the NPCs, if I do say so myself. <laughs> 
Continuing, we get a look at the vice sign, which of course is a reference to the Miami sign. Very cool. Then we transition to social media style references with NPCs partying on a boat. Then we have an alligator trapper pulling one out of a pool, which actually happens quite a bit on Florida. You see it on the news, so pretty funny reference to that. Then we get some women twerking on a car. More Florida activities. Then we get a reference to the street takeovers, which I find absolutely hilarious that Rockstar referenced that here. And then we can also identify some cars here in this one. So we have the tailgater here on the left. The green one here seems to be the regular Sultan. The gray one looks to be the regular Buffalo. The white one is the Dominator ASP. The silver one above it seems to be a new car. The purple one looks to be the Gauntlet Hellfire. The gray car in front of that is the original Penumbra. The white one and green one are both LG Retros. The pink car in the center is an updated Stainier. The green car doing donuts is a Gauntlet Hellfire, pretty ironic. The blue car is too difficult to see because of the smoke. On the right side here we have a red car that I cannot identify unfortunately. Then we have the Dominator ASP, the Cypher, and the tan car behind it is the Buccaneer, and the blue car looks to be the Vamos, but not 100% sure on that one. Then we have the purple car up top, which is a bit difficult to tell what it is, but I think it's possibly the Deviant. And then the red one next to it looks to be a Carbon Azair. And then a bit further up, we have the Comet S2, it looks like. Then next to that, either the Gauntlet Classic or the Gauntlet Classic Custom. And as far as the car next to the Comet, I can't identify that one, unfortunately. Moving on, we see a gator going into a store, more Florida activities, and tons of detail in the gas station as well. Then we see the body cam of some cops doing a raid, which is sick. And in the next clip, we see a very brief view of the regular Buffalo as a sheriff cop car, plus a Ram 3500 dually pickup truck, which is awesome. And for a split second, we see the Sand King XL making a return. Moving along, we have the original Ruiner making a return as well, and I can't really identify any of the other cars in the background here. But in regards to the highway signs in this scene, we see Vice Beaches, Port VC slash Keys. So they literally called it the same name as the Florida Keys, which is pretty funny, as well as Vice City International Airport and Kelly County. And a nice attention to detail is the toll logo on this sign, which looks very similar to the SunPass logo, which is used in South Florida. Continuing, we see a green truck, which seems to be based on an older Chevy Stepside truck. And we also get to see more of that sticker customization on the windows. Plus, we see working mirrors, so finally that's a thing. Continuing, we have more Florida Man activities with one of those above ground pools in the yard. Next up onto the next scene, it's a mud bogging scene and we have tons of truck characters full of mud and the white truck in the center is the Sand King XL and the rest of them seem to be different variants of F-150s, possibly car car 4x4s or just normal F-150s mixed in there as well. And then the green one here on the right is the Nagasaki Outlaw. And then moving forward here, we see another truck that pops into frame, which looks to be a car, car, 4x4 that's been turned into a monster truck, or of course it could also be another F-150 variant. Continuing, we have what seems to be a Vamos behind this lady. However, some of the details are a bit difficult to see, so, so that's why I'm not too sure on this one. Moving along, we get a look at the updated Stainier cop car plus a new Ford Explorer cop car, which is cool. And these have a livery that's pretty similar to the Broward County cop cars. Plus we get to see the new interior of the Tulip that's been updated and our first look at Jason in this trailer. And of course he's with Lucia after a robbery they did. Continuing to our next scene, we have the Hellion here on the far left and a new car based on what seems to be a VW Golf here and a cop car hellfire which is amazing with a Florida State Trooper style livery. So wow, that's awesome. 
Hellcat police cars, that's just nuts. Then in this clip we see a reference to a guy named the Miami Joker. And also a Spanish news channel reference as well, which there are many in Miami. Next up we get a look at the crazy dirt bike and ATV guys that do wild stunts on the street pretty often in Florida. And we see that in the next scene as well. However, we do see some new cars in here as well, including the Ford Taurus police car with a livery just like the one from the Miami-Dade police cars. And a Buffalo STX as a Miami-Dade police car as well with the updated livery. We also see the Comet Retro Custom with an updated back end. And at the top of the screen here, we have the regular Fudo making a return. And behind that, a new truck, which seems to be based on the second gen Dodge Ram. And behind that, we have the original Banshee. And the other cars in this clip are a bit too difficult to identify, although this silver one might be a new car. Then we get a look at the back of the new Shyster car we saw earlier with the model name confirmed as the PMP700 instead of the PMP600 name from GTA 4. And you can see it has some of that sticker window customization that we saw earlier. Plus we see a new truck based on a 90s Chevy stepside truck. Then we see Jason and Lucia robbing a store and escaping in their tulip. And in the parking lot in the background you can see the Annis Hellion. A new SUV which looks to be based on an Audi Q7, but not sure on that one. And on the left we see an updated dubstep which looks fantastic. And if we go forward here a bit, we can see another new pickup truck on the far right which seems to be based on a 70s Ford pickup. And then we get a look at the back end of the Tulip which has tons of bumper stickers. Then Jason and Lucia robbing another store with a better look at that 90s Chevy stepside truck in the background on the right. And of course it ends with the official GTA 6 logo and a release year of 2025. So wow, absolutely insane trailer. I still can't believe it's real and it's finally here after over 10 years of waiting. But based on everything I've seen so far analyzing this trailer, I'm very excited, and I'm sure you guys are as well. As usual, Rockstar's attention to detail is unmatched, and I truly think it will be worth the wait. Also, according to Take-Two Games article, it seems like the game will only be available for PS5 and Xbox Series X slash S consoles at launch, which makes sense as the PS4 and Xbox One probably wouldn't be able to run this game at all. <laughs> now, as far as PC, there's no mention of that here. So we probably won't see the PC version of this game release for at least a year or two. But anyways, again guys, thanks for watching, hope this was helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.